Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Masoud Yekani Fard. I'm an assistant research professor with the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Program at Arizona State University. My talk today is about properties of carbon nanotube bucket paper interface. Uh, the first, uh, we'll take a look at uh, basically what we are going to talk about today. Uh, uh, briefly, I'm going to discuss the fabrication procedure for the bucket paper membrane and two phase and three phase nanocomposites. Um, then we will talk about the main goal of this talk, which is about basically the uh, interface around the CNT network. And the, C, uh, the interface within the bucket paper, as, a, as a, when we look at it as one constituent and the surrounding polymer. Uh, the technique that we use is, is an atomic force microscopy based uh, technique because quantitative on a mechanic mapping technique. We look at the heterogeneity and homogeneity of the bucket paper at different length scales. And at the end, we are going to look at basically the interface of the, uh, the interface thickness of the bucket paper. So uh, this slide pretty much shows the uh, uh, a summary of uh, the fabrication procedure. It's a uh, uh, basically uh, compression technique uh, that we use for the bucket paper. The bucket paper out of the technique is the infiltrated, uh, basically soaked with the epoxy resin and uh, under the pressure. Uh, the, the infiltrated bucket paper is used for two different purposes. One for fabrication of the bucket paper films and the other one is for the fabricate for the fabrication of the three phase uh, basically nanocomposites. Now, as I said, the technique is atomic force microscopy based because quantitative nanomechanical mapping technique. The technique is pretty much as an established technique. It has uh, some complexities with the calibration procedure, which unfortunately we do not have time to go over the details of it, but the technique is very robust. If it's calibrated very well, it can basically use for uh, uh, basically submicron and nanoscale characterization. Uh, the trace and retrace curve is analyzed through a contact mechanic model uh, since uh, the features of this study fulfills the requirement of the DMT model. DMT model was used for the analysis of the results. Uh, NCHVA, our test plot 300 and our test plot 500 and TSPSS, the, the probes were used for this study investigation. So uh, here, this is slides, uh, the figure A shows the bucket paper before infiltration. When we look at it through a scanning electron microscope, we see pretty much uh, Macroscopically and macroscopically, it's a very it looks like a very homogeneous structure. It is a, a basically uh, entangled bucket paper all around this basically structure. Definitely, there are some uh, interbundle and intrabundle pores. So BJH technique was used to characterize these uh, pores. The interbundle the interbundle pores were around 30 to 60 nanometer and interbundle pores were about 80 to 150, 130 nanometer size. After infiltration with the uh, epoxy, the, through the soaking and pressure, we look at again through the scan electron microscopy. We see that there are some areas that they look like very well impregnated or we call it dense impregnated zones. These ten, dense impregnated zones, are give, they give us a CNT network with a pretty much a larger size. Then the other areas that they look like they're loose impregnated zones and uh, macroscopically, again, it looks like a homogeneous but submicron and nanoscopic scale uh, definitely doesn't look like much homogeneous. Uh, uh, definitely a technique that can uh, basically explore this heterogeneity would be atomic force microscopy. But these samples first, they need to be polished uh, up to 0 0.1 micron. Uh, and then we look at these samples through optical microscope to, uh, to basically uh, find the location of the interest, uh, this slender shape, uh, a shiny, uh, basically, material is a bucky paper, which is sandwiched between carbon fiber monofilament. 
So a uh, picture A and B, uh, just I put them, put them for the sake of comparison. Picture A is a, a regular polymetric composite and picture B is a CNT polymer nanocomposite which is 0.5 weight percent uh, multiple carbon energy. So uh, if you're gonna zoom in at this uh, 20 micron thickness slender shape like the paper, we look at around nine micron, uh, for example, the deformation profile, and then we do a section box analysis. We'll see that the uh, the red curve and blue curve, particularly the red curve, which is a box analysis, larger box around eight micron by eight micron, shows pretty much around three point five to four nanometer deformation throughout the backing paper. Very homogeneous. Meanwhile, the uh, section line, the black line, shows a uh, uh, high level of heterogeneity. Uh, the right side of this bucky paper uh, sh shows completely different deformation profile comparing to the left side. Now, if you look at the histograms over a larger zone of the 20 micron by 20 micron, which pretty much entire, it captures the entire width of the bucky paper. And then we look at the reduced modulus. We will see that skewed to the right with a peak that is around seven gigapascal, which is close to uh, basically the pure uh, nanoscale uh, reduced modulus of epoxy. The curve, uh, the histogram of the reduced modulus doesn't show a, a smooth curve, but it, we are expecting to see a couple of at least uh, Picks for that uh, the representative for the interface and uh, CNT and those happening around 15 to 20 gigapascal and around 30 to 35 gigapascal based on the basically stiffness of the probe that we pick. The adhesion is a bimodal again skewed to the right kind of a curve with two picks. One is a representative for the areas that doesn't basically infiltrate that epoxy in it, so it's pretty much a void or CNT with no epoxy and it shows less than one nanometer, than one nanometer adhesion. And the max, which is around basically between 15 to 25 nanometer. The deformation is a bell shaped with an average of two to two and a half nanometer with a handful of the number of the points that shows large deformation. So overall, macroscopically, the reduced modulus of our bucket paper is between 6.2 to 8.2 gigapascal, and adhesion is between 21 to 23 nanometer. Now, when we look at the interface, first we look at the interface of the carbon fiber monofilament and epoxy as a, as a reference. We look at the interface zone. And then for the carbon fiber polymer, we can use both adhesion and reduced modulus or DMP modulus as the channels that we can see the, the change. Uh, basically, the variation in the value and shows interface, it's interface around 14 nanometer. Now, when we look at the bucky paper, uh, epoxy and carbon fiber, and we zoom in the bucky paper area, somewhere around two micron by two micron, it's a hill and valley type uh, morpho uh, topology. And then we do the section analysis here, section six and seven, passing through the 2D image, uh, basic of this um, uh, bucket paper, we'll see that there are many spikes. Those spikes are representative of uh, the CNT networks. So anything that is highlighted in yellow is a CNT network. The CNT networks have different sizes. Uh, interestingly, the sizes can become classified to two different categories. The first one is a narrow interface, basically, uh, network with uh, width between 30 to around 60 nanometer, uh, which influenced by the size of intra-bundle porous. And the larger basic CNT networks, which are between 180 to 150 nanometer, and those are influenced by the intra-bundle porous. Now, the, the, the size of the interface itself is between 15 nanometer, as you see in the picture, up to around 44 nanometer that has come from our statistical analysis. Now, when we look at the bucket paper itself and uh, its uh, interface with epoxy, uh, unlike the carbon fiber here, we just only can use DMT modulus as a representative. 
uh, and uh, as a parameter to study the interface and the interface is, is much larger with something between 40 nanometer compared to the carbon fiber and a pump to which is 30 nanometer. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I would more than happy to take questions.